Tyler Maley just signed a two-year, $22 million deal with the defending champion Texas Rangers to be a starting pitcher in the rotation as they look to go ahead and repeat in 2024. Maley is currently recovering from Tommy John surgery, so he'll be out till midseason, which creates a very interesting situation for Texas. He's going to be out to midseason, so will Max Scherzer, and DeGrom is also recovering from Tommy John surgery, so they have a very interesting mix of three pitchers who will not be able to pitch until at least midseason, if at all, in 2024. When Maley does make his debut in 2024, he will be an impact player. He's had a great career so far, and that's part of the reason why he was able to get $16.5 million in 2025. Yes, the market has been relatively player-heavy this offseason, even excluding the Shohei Otani deal, but Maley's not a bad pitcher, and he has a good chance of being a playoff starter down the stretch should Texas make it again in 2024. To celebrate his new deal, let's go ahead and look back at the 2022 trade deadline where Tyler Malley got traded from Cincinnati to Minnesota. Although it might not seem like a huge trade in hindsight because there were a lot of big trades in 2022, this one had a huge impact, especially on the Cincinnati Reds. Since he hasn't pitched since 2022 due to that Tommy John surgery, it's a good idea to look at who he is as a pitcher and just see what we're going to look forward to come middle of next season. The Rangers want to make another deep playoff run and Maley should be a big part of that. And I wouldn't be shocked to see him appear on our screen come an October night where the Rangers are taking on another AL division opponent in a chance to go ahead and send the Rangers deeper into the postseason. So in this video, we will examine the trade that sent Tyler Maley from Cincinnati to Minnesota, the ripple effects that's had on both teams as it's been quite pronounced actually, and see exactly what each team has benefited from in this deal. Before we begin, you'll see that baseball in the bottom right corner. You can hit that to subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot. It'll get you more content like this, not only from me, but from other awesome baseball creators out there and keep you more up to date on the trades of today and yesteryear. There's also a link in the description if that's easier for you as well. Without further ado, let's examine the Tyler Maley trade for the Reds and the Twins, see how both teams have fared, and look forward to his future to see exactly what the Rangers are getting out of their right-handed pitching starter. In order to truly get the full picture on Tyler Maley, you have to go a couple seasons back. His last true full season was 2021, and he's pitched enough in 2022 to get a decent enough sample size, but 2023, only five starts before he got shut down for Tommy John. It's just not a lot to go off of, so it's been a couple years since he's been an effective starter. After making his Major League debut at the end of 2017, Maley made the Reds opening day roster in 2018 as a starter and pitched in 23 games, compiling an ERA of about 5, and the same thing basically got repeated in 2019, an ERA slightly above 5 with 25 games started. Things started to come together in the pandemic shortened 2020 season with an ERA now around 3.5 and it looked like Maley might be putting things together and in a positive way. Maley was a former top prospect, Fangrass had him as high as number 5 in all of the red system at some point, and to see him make these strides was definitely an improvement. 2021 showed that that success that he had in that shortened season wasn't just a fluke, he was here to stay. Maley put together a 13-6 record with a 3.75 ERA and led all of Major League Baseball with 33 games started. He also struck out 210 batters across 180 innings, so he was definitely a strikeout machine. Granted, he did walk a little more than you'd like to see 64 walks on the season, which isn't stellar, but he had a lot of potential to be a high strikeout, a high walk kind of guy who doesn't let a lot of guys on base with a 1.23 whip. He showed the flashes of being not maybe an ace, but a great number two, maybe a high-end number three option on a staff competing for a championship. His peripheral stats like Sierra, FIP, and XERA were all hovering around the same metric as his ERA, so that shows that it was an accurate estimation of exactly who he was as a pitcher in 2021. Maley, along with the help of the expanded playoffs, of course, was a big reason why the Reds were a playoff team in 2020 and why they were a above 500 team in 2021. Of course, one player can't carry the team, and the Reds organization wasn't looking to win right now. They looked to win in 2024 or 2025 with a lot of young players ready to be called up, and therefore, Maley just did not fit their timeline. Heading into 2022, people expected Maley to be traded either at this deadline or at the next deadline because he'd be a free agent after the 2023 season. Although he did regress slightly from where he was in 2020 and 2021 with the Reds, he still put together a solid start to the 2022 season. He wasn't bad by any means, let's make that perfectly clear. He was walking a couple more guys, striking out a little less, more people getting more hard hits off of him, but it wasn't like he was a bad pitcher at all. During his time in Cincinnati, he had a 4-4 ERA, but that was weighted a little bit less simply because of his 3.6 FIP, his 3.8 Sierra, and those numbers were what really drew teams into him at the deadline. They saw what he had done the previous season, and the peripherals were looking better than his actual stats. As the trade deadline loomed, there were a lot of teams calling for services, and the team that won out in the end were the Minnesota Twins, who were really looking to get an impact pitcher as they raced to win 
the American League Central Division crown. Molly only made nine starts with the Twins, four in 2022, five in 2023, so there's not a ton to talk about. His 2022 stats mimicked what happened with the Cincinnati Reds. It was kind of consistent of what he was across that season, but 2023 showed a lot of flash. Although it is a small sample size of only 25 and a third innings pitched, he was back to his normal strikeout numbers, 27 and a 5% strikeout rate, and was walking significantly less with a 4.9% clip compared to the about 9% he had in his years in Cincinnati. That's a big improvement and goes to show that he has a lot of potential in the future. Although there obviously is some injury risk with him coming off of Tommy John, he's only 29 for the 2024 season, so there's a lot of potential for him to go and grow into the pitcher that the Rangers want him to be. If he can keep those strikeout numbers high, those walk numbers low, he's going to be a very good pitcher in the foreseeable future and someone that the Rangers are going to rely on if they want to win a World Series in 2024 and 2025. It's clear Maley didn't work out for the Twins, and that's just sometimes how it works. Injuries happen, and as long as they didn't give up too much, this won't be a horrible trade. Unfortunately for the Twins, they gave up way too much. And you can see Spencer Steer. You've most likely heard that name, even if you're not a super big baseball guy. He was 6th in NL Rookie of the Year in 2023, and he was someone that was a really important utility man for the Reds as they made their postseason push. Although they fell short, I have no doubt that he's going to be a big part of their future as they go ahead and try and win a World Series this year and next year as their competitive window just starts to open. The Twins took Steer in the third round of the 2019 MLB Draft out of the University of Oregon, and he was drafted to be a what I call good player. He didn't have any standout skill, especially when he was a prospect, but he had a good hit tool. He could hit for power, but not super big power. He had decent run speed. He could play almost anywhere on the infield, and that's something that had a lot of potential. He also had some outfield potential as well, and that just increased his value. His stats at the University of Oregon weren't a huge jump out trait, but he was a shortstop who had some defensive versatility, and that was something that the Twins really valued and something the Reds valued, even though they had a crowded infield already and a ton of infield prospects on the call up as well. Now that Sear has made his major league debut, it's clear that those initial prospect reviews might have been slacking on that power a little bit. He had 23 home runs in 2023, which is incredibly impressive and shows that, honestly, I undervalued his power, and so did a lot of prospect evaluators as well. A lot of that breakout has to be due to the fact that the Twins worked really hard on him developing that power, especially during the pandemic short season. They thought he could really tap into it, and he absolutely has. He played in 28 games with the Reds in 2022 after the deal, but really got his first full taste of full season ball this past season in 2023 and put together a respectable slash line. I already mentioned the 23 home runs, so let's talk more about some of the other stats. A 271 batting average, an OBP above 356, and an OPS above 800 resulted in OPS plus of 119. He was an above average hitter who had incredible defensive versatility, playing almost all over the diamond. He played 73 games at first base before Christian Encarnacion Strand got called up, third base 47 games, left field 45 games, second base 16 games, and even right field for 3 games. He has incredible defensive versatility and that is a huge asset for our team. He's going to be playing a lot of the outfield in 2024 simply because the Reds have a glutton of infielders to deal with and the signing of Jamer Candelario, who you can see that video that I made on his trade at the 2023 deadline in the top right corner now, has just complicated that even further. It's clear that Spencer Sear is going to be a key cog for the Reds as they make their postseason push in 2024 and beyond, and it's clear to see why. He's a very good offensive player, incredible defensive versatility, he can play almost any position, and he's just an all-around good clubhouse presence. Players like that aren't the easiest to come by, and the fact that he has good offensive production on top of his ability to play a bunch of positions is really valuable. The ability to plug and play him wherever you want is going to help the Reds contend in 2024 and beyond. I'd say that Steer for Maley would already be a win for the Reds, but there's one more player added to this deal, and I've already mentioned his name once. Christian Encarnacion Strand was someone who was not a huge hype prospect heading into 2022. He's maybe a fringe top 30 guy out of Oklahoma State, but a strong 2022 campaign in the minor leagues started to push him up prospect lists before he ended up getting that trade to Cincinnati. Continuing on that season in the Reds minor league system and a very strong start to 2023 in the minor leagues pushed him all the way up to MLB's top 100 prospects list. Shortly after, he made his major league debut and people were wondering if he'd have the longest last name in all of baseball jerseys. He just shortened it to Encarnacion for his jersey, but it was a fun time to see people make the edits that they did with his jersey name. One of the biggest limitations to Encarnacion Strand's upside is the fact that he is very defensively limited, the opposite problem of Spencer Steer. He technically can play right field and he can play third base, but defensively he really should only be limited to first base and even then he's a negative defender, so the Reds might be forced to just kind of stick him at DH. 
Now that Joey Votto has gone, playing time at first base has cleared up, but still his defensive value isn't great. And first base is a less defensively demanding position, so the offensive side matters a little bit more for people who play there, and he can match that, but he just doesn't have that great defense like a Matt Olson does that can go and get down, pick up a ball that's hit in the dirt. Just not the same kind of value on the defensive side of the ball, which is okay, but for me, I think he profiles more as a DH unless you really have to play him at first base. With the Reds' bountiful bunch of infield players, I don't see him needing to play first base, but to have a spot start here and there just to get his legs warm, that's fine, but I wouldn't rely on him as my everyday first baseman. Offensively, CES is a slugger, 13 home runs, not a great on-base percentage, doesn't walk a ton, and he does strike out a lot. He chases, he whiffs at pitches, but that's kind of what you get out of a slugger. But one thing that is really exciting is his stack ass data for things other than chasing pitches and whiffing at pitches. He's just above 90 percentile in sweep bar percentage and just below in hard hit percentage. So when he does make contact with the ball, it is going a long way and it's easy to go ahead, make good contact, the high exit velocity above 90 average and get a ball past a diving infielder or send it into the gap for a double. There's a lot of potential for him to do that. He's a little bit of a pull hitter as well. So with the band of the shift, that's a benefit, but he's a guy who can provide some decent offensive value, a little bit defensively limited, but he's a guy who has a lot of potential to be a very good player for the Reds going forward. He's only going to be 25 next year and has six more years of team control, so maybe they get a couple more infield prospects if Cam Collier ends up getting rushed through the minor leagues or one of their multiple shortstop prospects makes a debut. Maybe he ends up getting forced out and flipped in a deal, but I think he provides a lot of value right now offensively for the Cincinnati Reds. Obviously, the Twins needed to make the trade at the deadline to acquire Tyler Maley or some other form of starting pitching. They were looking to win the AL Central. They were looking to make a deep run in the postseason. And although it didn't work out in the end, you can't blame them for making this trade. Obviously, in hindsight, it doesn't look great. CES and Spencer Steer are both players that have performed much better than the Twins would have liked after this deal. And although they obviously had the right instincts in drafting both of them, things just didn't turn out well after they traded them. That happens. There's sometimes that trades work out really well and don't work out at all for certain teams. Unfortunately for the Twins, this isn't the only bad deal they made at the 2022 deadline. You can look at the Jorge Lopez trade where they gave up Yanir Cano in the upper right corner right now, and it's just part of the issue with what the Twins have done. They've made a couple bad trades, and now what could be a very potent lineup in a very weak division is somewhat limited. Byron Buxton isn't the same, and to have someone like Christian Encarnacion Strand and Spencer Steeler near the top and middle of your lineup would make a huge difference for the Minnesota Twins right now. That's just kind of how it worked out, unfortunately, and we'll see how it goes in the future. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Again, you can do that either on my channel, using that baseball in the bottom right corner, or in the link in the description. It really means a lot, and again, it'll get you more baseball content like this. There'll be two more things popping up on the screen, a video on the left, a video on the right. Make sure to watch those if you're interested. And there'll also be a baseball right there in the middle of your screen. You can hit that. Same with the baseball on the bottom right. Take you to the channel to subscribe. Thank you again, and I hope to see you in the next video.